welcome to the Virtual Groom Room. My name is Jack, your host, and today I am bringing you another shaving video. And before I go into the video, uh, let me tell you that I have a 1,000 subscriber giveaway in the video before this, more than likely, so go have a look at that. I'm giving away a Christopher Bradley razor in stainless steel. I'm giving away a leaf razor, which is like a an alternative to cartridge razors. And I'm also giving away a That Darn Rob brush with a turn-in shave knob. So take a look at that. Um, what am I using today? Today I'm going to be showing you Peaches and Cognac, or Cognac as we would say in England by Ariana Evans. I'll be giving you my impressions after putting some a decent amount of time in with this uh, V3 Hawk supplied to me, or at least lent to me by um, Christopher David Bailey at IMCDB. If you haven't heard of him, you probably should. Go check out his channel, I'll link it in the description below. Um, yeah, so I'm going to be giving you my impressions of those two products. Uh, the brush we're going to be using for that, of, of course matching the pink theme, is my That Don Rob with a V4 tip knot. I call this my coral reef brush. It looks a bit like coral and it's pink, it kind of makes sense. And uh, the post is going to be the matching splash. So let's get straight into this then, so let me start talking about the soap. Um, being 100% honest up front, this scent is not my scent. Um, it's, it's marketed as peach and cognac. I just get really, really sweet peach. And quite frankly, that is not my sort of thing whatsoever. It's pleasant, but it's not the sort of thing I wanna walk around smelling like, quite honestly. Um, Peter is generally the, the artisan that is has way more hits than misses for me, but this is a miss. You can't really win them all. This is in the Kaizen base, so I do look forward to experiencing the performance on that. So that's what we're gonna be lathering up. Let me get a decent load of this. Um, again, remember, I'm using the V4 tip knot. So that means for me that I need to really wring out this brush. I don't want much water residual in it because I want it to pick up soap and we're gonna get a good load on this. Um, so yeah, the, the scent isn't really my thing, but that's okay. Um, the performance of Kaizen does make up for that. Quite honestly, I'm probably gonna, just gonna give this to my wife who likes shaves with traditional gear like we shave with. So. I imagine she'll absolutely love the soap. She says it smells of peach bellinis. Um, I can see where it's coming from. It, like I said, not really my thing, but that's okay. Um, I fucking love the label though. The label is badass, which is really unfortunate because it's the sort of label which I fucking hope I would love the scent, but yeah, alas, that's not the case. Get, get a good load on here. Um, just keep, keep loading it until I'm happy. Load it like you hate it, man as uh, Anthony from The Stallion would say, or from Shaving With Stallion, Anthony Esposito, however we want to call him. Let's get the glasses off and wipe the face. I'm gonna be one of those Kaizen lathers. Trust me, my intention isn't to lather for 20 minutes. I'll do my best not to. Okay, let's build this lather. Let's get the proto lather actually. Um, Yeah, it is just peaches at the end. Yeah, not a huge fan. I mean, it's pleasant, don't get me wrong, but it's not really the sort of thing I want to smell of, is the way I would put it. If you're a big fan of peach, you're gonna love it. I'm not one of those people, unfortunately. Normal Kaizen performance though. I can tell this is gonna be a killer lava. <laughs> I've received some good products recently and I haven't yet um, given you, given a chance to put on the channel, but you're gonna see some cool videos in the next week um, of some new soaps, some new aftershaves, etc. So stay tuned for that. Okay, so there's no residual water. Now we start to add water. And because it's Kaizen, I can add loads. Absolutely loads I added there. You can see it soaking the brush really use it. Keep loading that up there. These tips are so soft. And very dense too, like it's not like they're just soft. They have good backbone because of the density. Okay, even more water. I think I might have overloaded, but that's okay. 
I did load it like I hated it, man, and that's what happens, man. Oh, just so you guys know, um, I have a tribute video coming of Shaving with Chief. You should see next week. It's, uh, I've gone all out for this, I promise. I, I've, uh, I'll give you a bit of insight. I've spent $100 on props. You can try and figure out what they are, but I've spent $100 on props, so. That's what I'm gonna tell you. <laughs> Corey's become a very, very good friend of mine. For anyone that doesn't know Corey, you probably should. His link will be in the description below. Speaks with plenty of honesty and is an all-round really good dude, so I would absolutely check him out. Kaizen is such an interesting hiring experience. It's just so dense. Ah, loose hair, mill turn. It's funny because there was someone that got butt hurt for me complaining about loose hairs once. It's like, dude, chill. How are you for lava? Getting there. We're still a bit pasty. Well, we're not pasty at all, but we're very still thick. I think that's just the consistency of Kaizen, frankly. Look at that. Bitch slap myself with the brush. So slick. It really is. We're still gonna keep adding water because, you know, we're not at 10 minutes yet, so that's the aim. It's to finish lathering at 10 minutes. So by 10 minutes, this lather will be really well hydrated. Keep building it here. Man, oh man. Look at the sheen on this. I, I wonder if you can see it. I can move it around. It's a fun, fun soap base to use. It is my favorite soap base in lather, just because it can, you can just put so much water to it and mess around with it. Man, that's one hell of a lather. It's not like a big puffy lather, but it's so dense and so well hydrated. I, I just want to see what Chris Maiden can do with it. Um, the guy builds lathers, you know, the size of Australia. I'd really love to see what he can do with Kaizen. Bit more water and we're good. This stuff just takes so much goddamn water. Okay, we're good. Let's do the lines here. Don't need to shave that high up, so no point in wasting the soap. Is there? No, no there's not. Um, Man, it's just so dense, like it's crazy. So we're gonna do some impressions of the uh, Razor Rock Hawk B3. And uh, yeah, I, I, so I've put in a few shades with this razor. Uh, I'm, I'm impressed by it, quite honestly. Let's start with the head design here. So what they've done with this head design is I think what they've done, what the way they've approached it is that I think they've approached it in the most cost-effective way in terms of approaching the design. Um, 
They've basically given you a head slightly larger than the Black Man Vector. But they've given it a place to post here. A big reason for that, something you'll notice if you have a Black Man Vector, it has a uh, proprietary um, kind of middle post. And the reason for that is it helps sit the Artist Club style blades. Um, the way they've got around that by still making a small head is there's like a, a loading area here or at least a handle loading area and then a place to put your blade smart. I can see why you would do that. No, the style of shave. This is more mild than the Vector for me. Um, if the Vector's a six out of 10, this is about a four and a half. It's noticeably less blade feely or efficient. It's not as efficient as the Vector in my opinion. However, the amount of comfort you gain from having less efficiency is noticeable. I do find it a more comfortable razor to use. So there's definitely that to consider too. Um, I'm, I'm impressed with the quality of the shave. I've tried, tried a few blades in this and uh, more efficient, more aggressive blades. It still does a remarkable job. As you can see, I'm just kind of nonchalantly running, running it along my face. It's a very easy razor to use. Which I believe is um, Razor Rock's approach to head geometry anyway. I don't think they uh, look to make really aggressive razors. That's not really who their target market are. You know, just breeze through that first pass, as you can see there. It does a good job, it's a very comfortable razor. There you go. Just rinsing here in between the passes. Wow, <laughs> yeah, crazy residual slickness. Let's uh, go again. Let's build that second pass lather. So the thread bearing, um, and what do I mean by thread bearing? Thread bearing is the creating the illusion of soft threads, although they are good high quality threads, theoretically, in terms of just the general kind of makeup. Remember, um, for the most part, threading on razors is standard, which is a 1032, but not all threads are equal. Um, you can create threads in different ways. I used to work for a company that produced um, motorcycle fasteners, and that includes bolts, which are, of course, threaded. And uh, the threads are either crossed or they're rolled. Um, Rolled threads are generally less likely, but most of the things, most of the threads in this industry will be rolled just because of a uh, level of production. The threading on this is smooth. There's enough, enough thread there to qualify as good thread bearing, which is fantastic. Let's go across the grain here. It's just so easy to use. And don't get me wrong guys, just because it's comfortable doesn't mean it's not efficient. It's efficient, it doesn't lack efficiency. For me personally, for my use case. If you like a more efficient razor, and you do like that blade fill, I'm of the opinion that I'm not sure if this would qualify that for you. However, it's very smooth. It's comfortable, which is good. Awesome. So in this, I have a Schick P30 Pro line. They are generally my go-to blades when it comes to Artist Club style blades. I found they're the smoothest 
And yeah, I, I care for that sort of thing, as you know. I do have a bit of irritation from a straight shave a few days ago, so that's nothing to do with the razor. In fact, since I've been shaving with this razor, I've noticed that it's not aggravated it in any way, which is good. Awesome. Let's talk about the handle design here. The handle design um, is decent uh, for me. There's, again, a lot of... What they've done that I do like is they've created a really concave uh, tip here. And what I mean by that, that, I'm certain that this is a one-piece handle design. I don't think this is a three-piece handle design. This is made out of one solid. That That might be an extra piece there. I don't quite know. In fact, I'm certain it is. Um, I like the lack of complete straight lines. It's a clear angle here, which shows decent handle design. Um, the bottom is kind of made so you can stand the razor up, I believe, for photos and stuff like that. Or they've done that unintentionally, I'm not quite sure. The overall handle design is acceptable. I, I don't have any problems with it. It doesn't blow me away in terms of just pure design innovation, but you need to remember what we're paying here for this. The overall finish for the for the money you spend is very reasonable. It's, it's not the best finish I've ever seen. However, all of the problems that you would perceive with a finish, uh, machining marks, scratches, um, things like that, it, it doesn't have that, which is obviously fantastic. Yeah, um, overall, I think in terms of the actual razor as a whole, I think it proposes fantastic value. If you wanted a stainless steel artist club style razor, but didn't want to pay like north of $100, this is a, a great option for you, frankly. Um, if you wanted one of those more premium offerings, which I think have, I mean, it's, it's certainly, it's premium for the cost, but I wouldn't say it's, it's premium overall. Uh, there's a few aspects to this in terms of, I can tell how they've cut corners for design, but it, which is fine because of how much we're paying here. We're just going to do a bit of clean up here. Overall. It's well made relative to the cost. And poses another good option. Cool, I think we're good there. Okay, let's get all of the uh, soap from the brush and create a face wash. So, okay, let me get, get this on the face and I'll be back for the post shave and the final thoughts. I'll see you soon. Hey guys, it is post shave time. So as I said at the start of the video, let's get the matching splash here. Peter's splashes are of the highest quality in my experience. So let's get a good amount of that on the hands. Yeah, this, so this smells more like a, very interesting. This smells like a peach, but it's not quite, it's not quite as sweet. I much prefer the scent of that. Very, very interesting. Wow. <laughs> yeah, that's actually really nice. These, the splash is quite a bit different. The, I'd say, it has like a more natural peach scent instead of a really sweet peach scent like the soap. I don't mind that one so much. So yeah, let's do a recap of the stuff we used and I'll let you guys go. Peach and Cognac by Ariana Evans. Scent isn't quite for me, however, the normal Kaizen performance is outstanding. If you're a fan of peach, then I would recommend this to you because the soap base is so good and tremendous value. The razor. Um, one of the best value offerings in terms of the uh, Artist Club style razor lines. Uh, decent, thoughtful design. Um, by thoughtful, I mean relative to the cost. You're not going to get a, you know, a Wolfman style um, level of design approach or 
to tar or anything like that, but for the cost, you're getting a really good value product here. It shaves very well. Like I said, I put the shave just under mid. I really do not think it's very efficient or very aggressive. I think every this is a really good option for an artist club style daily shaver, especially with the uh, amount of blades and kind of how much they can change that. Overall, I'm happy with this razor and if I was looking for a more affordable artist club style razor, I would um, I would consider purchasing this. I think it I think it poses very, very good value. Um, my brush of choice today was the Coral Reef, that darn Rob brush. I really like this brush. The V4 tip knot has a little bit of a learning curve to learn. Once you get it, I think it's one of the softest mass produced knots in the game. And uh, finally, my post shave was the Peaches and Cognac post, which I actually much prefer to the actual soap. The way I would describe it is the soap is considerably more sweet or sweeter rather, grammar. Um, and overall, I think it's just more pleasurable to me. But yeah, I hope you guys have enjoyed the video today. Once again, if you haven't checked out the 1000 subscriber giveaway video, it's the video I released before this. I'm giving away some good stuff on there. Go check it out, tell me what you think. Yeah, um, if you're around here, haven't yet subscribed, please consider doing so. We just hit over 1K so I can now start bringing you live content. I'm gonna get into the swing of things um, in terms of the live content for YouTube. If you wanna see that, tell me in the description below. Tell me the stuff you wanna see me use in the live content. Uh, any topics you want me to discuss and we'll start exploring those. But yeah, my name is Jack, your host from the Virtual Grim Room. Wherever you are in the world, have a wonderful day and goodbye for now.